Hey everyone, I wanted to take a moment out of the day and say a happy 40th anniversary to not one but two amazing films, and that of course is Ridley Scott's Blade Runner, as well as John Carpenter's classic The Thing, which I even had my Thing shirt on today. Sort of ironic that both of these films uh, actually came out on the exact same day, 40 years ago, and both of them uh, sort of didn't do well on their initial release, but eventually would go on and garner obviously a huge following and be considered classics uh, today. Now, both of those films had a lot sort of stacked against them. I mean, obviously, I think, I think they share uh, something as far as they're both dark films they're both showcase sort of flawed characters they both sort of you know don't exactly have the happiest of endings they were a little bit more uh um, slightly more experimental in in certain ways so it was kind of odd to actually release these films in june uh, anyway sort of in the summer season where people are looking a little bit more for escapism and indeed these two films uh, outside of probably being released at the wrong time were also swallowed up uh by another film that came out just two weeks prior and that of course was Steve Steven Spielberg's E.T. And that film uh, was, uh, ironically, in, in some ways, it was kind of the same thing. A little bit, it was a film that was actually not um, expected to be what it turned into, which, of course, was this massive phenomenon. It's not one of those things where it's like, you know, I don't I don't want anybody kind of thinking like, well, you know, well, these films are better than E.T. It's not it's not a competition in that sense. It's just the fact that when E.T. came out, which was in, a, in and of itself a gamble, um, it was a phenomenon. It was a massive phenomenon that people weren't expecting. So that film came out and obviously turned into this massive hit. And of course, everybody wanted to see this film. So any other film that came out around that time basically got swallowed up in the success of E.T. And at the time, of course, that also meant uh, films like The Thing and Blade Runner. And again, I still kind of feel like those two films uh, could have done better if they were released literally at just a different time of the year. They just don't seem like summer films, uh, you know, as far as like going to and now uh, granted with Blade Runner you could make the argument because of course it started Harrison Ford who was in the height of his success coming off of obviously Indiana Jones you know Raiders of the Lost Ark uh the year before you know Star Wars obviously because this was uh two years after Empire and one year before Return of the Jedi so between Indiana Jones and Han Solo obviously you know he was massive so him being at the at the head of the film obviously meant that you know I'm sure they expected it to be this runaway hit not realizing that people at the time anyway weren't ready to see him play a completely different character he was not really this heroic character he's you know kind of down on his luck he's borderline alcoholic he was lonely he was you know sort of in this dark world and i think they expected well just because he was in it that it would be this uh runaway hit which of course it wasn't so in that way like blade runner was actually um less of a success than even the thing because the thing at least i think there were there were moderate expectations now they weren't exactly met only because of again films of any type that during that time were getting swallowed up by the success of E.T. But obviously what these two films have in common is of course they have what I think is even more important than initial success uh, when it comes to movies is these long legs where generation after generation people will discover these films and appreciate them and as you know with you know re-releases of the films on different you know formats and all kinds of stuff people will want to have them in their collection and you know rediscover them and talk about them and everything so even though these films were not the hits that they were hoping they would be uh, at the time they obviously will uh, be the hits in the long run in part of film history history and it's like and again i'm not taking anything away from et i don't want anyone bashing et because it's like you know you can't blame a film for being a success in that way because i still think et even then is uh even even though it was spielberg a little bit of an experimental film as well you know in in a chance kind of thing where all three films have their place in film history but it's just kind of nice that uh these films you know do live on to this day and the fact that you know we do celebrate them all the time obviously with the thing you know obviously i still just i mean like i said i got my shirt on for today um and obviously this just past week even uh from this recording there was a uh, fathom event of the thing even though i believe the sunday night showing had a bit of a screw up that i believe was corrected by the wednesday showing but the fact that it actually did really well uh is just a showcase you know showing that these films do have the legs that they do and this is quite a year i tell you for 40th anniversary i gotta i should do a video in 1982 because boy did we get some amazing films that year i mean speaking of spielberg we obviously also got you know poltergeist um as well and we got obviously some of my favorites which i will be uh celebrating later this year of course creep show one of my big big uh favorites you know one of the films that really 
turned me into a horror fan. And also Halloween 3, which is another film that, you know, kind of came out. And I don't think people really appreciated it, but found its audience, uh, you know, years later. So yeah, that's probably something I want to look into, you know, some of the amazing releases we got in 1982, all celebrating their 40th anniversary this year. So obviously, I had to take this moment out of the day and wish a very happy 40th to these two amazing, amazing films, ironically released on the same day, which I, it still gets to me, because I think they almost had some similar paths you know in a way which is which is cool yeah it's kind of the fun part about film history let me know if you have any uh sort of fun memories of like the time you discovered uh each film and again just take a moment out of the day and just celebrate these two incredible films so as always thank you for watching and i will see you on the next one